coming to you one more time. Wednesday night. This is August what? What is the date? Third? Uh, fifth. Fifth. fifth yes. Time flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, so we're glad that some of you are tuning in, and uh, we still have pretty good response, and hopefully it'll grow, and uh, we'll be able to, to reach those that uh, are curious and want to know uh, more about God and uh, the Scripture, spiritual things, uh, the main thing. Billy Sands is with me tonight again on the left side, <laughs> right. should be on the right side. <laughs> but... Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we uh, were talking about, we mentioned the will of God, and uh, passingly, and I was reminded by an elder's wife that you said you were going to teach on that, so we mm-hmm. will just skim the surface on it. It'll take, it would take four hours to go through, well, actually, the whole Bible is the will of God. All right. Right. Amen. But so many years ago, I think back in 1999, I think it was, I'd have to look here. Yeah. 1999. Um. We decided to write this little book called the Believer's Jumpstart Book. And, of course, most all of our Zion Word Church members have read this at least once, and the new ones probably haven't, but they will. Amen. Because it was written to give the new convert a jump start. Get it? Amen. <laughs> and also to refresh the pure minds of those that have been saved for a while. Uh, you'd be surprised the people we talk to on the street throughout the week and you ask them what the will of God is and they don't know. Yeah, They really don't know. Mm-mm. So it's very important. We've had very good success uh, with this little book, uh, mainly for Africa. And how many thousands have we given out? Uh, I, we, we stopped counting after yeah, a while. We, thousands. Yeah, because we have it in uh, their language, uh, Bimba, Ak- Swahili, Swahili. Uh, Swahili. got it in Rwandan, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's uh, Spanish. Yeah, different dialects. Oh, one one ones. church uh, there in Yoanda didn't have anything to study, and and so we got it translated and printed yep. and shipped to them, and they had something to study. Same yep. way with Haiti. I mean, been all over the place. Uh, the same thing there. They yeah. didn't have anything. French. So, uh, we do have it in French, French for yes. them. Yeah. Yeah. And also, we have another little book that was a follow-up on the uh, the Holy Ghost for Believers Only. The Holy Ghost, Ghost for Believers Only, which is a follow-up to the Believers Jumpstart. If you'll email us, we'll send you one or both free of charge to help you on your in your Christian life, okay? So keep that in mind. Tonight we're going to be starting on uh, and talking about the, the will of God. Before we go to John chapter 8 and verse 32... I was listening to a minister this week, and I wrote it down as quote. I quote him. He says, "Confession with the mouth is what saves a person." Uh, that's not exactly correct. No, no. But that's uh, this confession principle. It's gone overboard. So, does confession with one's mouth save a person, or does having believing faith in the cross save a person? Believing faith in the cross. Yep. That's Amen. right. And that's the only thing. So my question is, are these people already saved? Hmm. God will be the judge, but then we, we've got to hold the plumb line here as ministers of the gospel. The truth and nothing but the truth. Amen. Amen. And uh, there, so we go to John 9.32 then. 9, 8.32? Eight, yeah, eight, excuse me. 8.32. Right. John 8.32. And you mm-hmm. shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And then drop down to verse 36, below that same chapter. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. The Son is the only one that can make people free. Amen. And there's only one way to be free, and that's to accept what he did for us at Calvary by faith and apply it to our lives. However, forgiveness is not deliverance. I want to say it again. If forgiveness is not deliverance, uh, we start by receiving uh, Christ and accepting His pardon. Amen. We're forgiven through repentance. But deliverance is a process, and it takes some time to grow and to learn. Uh, but one thing's for sure: we'll know the truth, and the truth will make us. That's a process. Make yes. Amen. It's not. It's not like that. Right. We don't have a magic wand to wave over people's heads and suddenly. <laughs> right. No, it's it's a growing thing. 
and God understands that. And uh, so this is one reason why the, uh, the church is needed to minister the truth to people and help them in their Christian life. Right. It's always been said, you know, you've lived, how, you know, whatever the age is that you get saved, mm-hmm. from birth until that age, you've lived in sin and learned how to live in sin. When you get born again or born again, um, you, you're not instantly. No. Everything's fine. It's no, a, it's, it's li- a process. It's, yeah. It's like we're walking this way. So repentance is we're walking this way. And we turn around and go back the other way. Right. Actually, we go the right way. So yeah. we got to earn, unlearn all the bad stuff. Yeah, which is natural. <laughs> which is natural stuff to us. That's right. We'll so that's what repentance direction. really is. So Amen. repentance is not forgiveness. Uh, it's it's part of the deal. But then to repent means to turn to turn. Yeah. To turn away with that which is wrong. Change your mind. And turn to God. Change your mind about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And your direction. That's right. So. It seems to me that repentance then is intertwined with forgiveness and vice versa. So we start off our life that way with Christ being Savior and Lord. Our faith must be in something that has been done, not in something we can do. Big amen. Like <laughs> saying you're saved. That won't do it. Right. No. Uh so what I'm saying is, when that minister said, uh, confession with the mouth saves a person, actually what he's doing is making a work out of it. Right. And I think it's Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. Ninth verse says something like, uh, not a works, lest any man should boast. That's right. Amen. So if we lean on works of any kind, then we're frustrating the grace of God and actually uh, going away from the grace of God. Yeah into our own self-righteousness, our own ability to have favor with God, and God cannot accept that. He only accepts favor, uh, gives us favor, I should say, through Christ. So He makes us worthy. We're not worthy on our own. And I think that's one of the biggest deceptions in the American church Mm. overall, is trying to do something to earn salvation when uh, it's a free gift. Yeah, it's difficult for people to accept. Yeah. But that's God's way. Right. And uh, it's a good deal. Now, Ephesians 1, 4, we're going to start off with the uh, the will of God a little bit tonight. The first thing, of course, is salvation. So it's God's will for people to be saved. Amen. Ephesians 1, 4, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. This scripture is what we started the Jumpstart book with, and uh, basically it deals with God's foreknowledge. Right. God doesn't force a person to be saved or force a person not to be saved. He doesn't pick and choose, uh, because, but he already knows what people are going to do. Right. He already knows what people are going to choose or who's going to reject, who's going to accept. And on that basis, then, uh, that scripture is valid. Amen. But it's not a predestinated thing like some teach. Uh, the only time believers are predestinated is when they are baptized into the church. The church is predestinated, not an individual. Right. Amen. So the Americans have got it all wrong. <laughs> of course. And how this happened, I don't know, or maybe over a period of generations, probably. But uh, the Lord's bringing the church back to the, to the true straight and narrow way. Amen. That leads to life eternal. Amen. The first thing, we must surrender to God's will. And that uh, this is where the problem is, is that people that are not saved do not want to surrender to God's will. Mm-hmm. Now, why do you think that is? Because of sin. Mm-hmm. Uh, people don't want, like to admit that they're wrong. <laughs> or <laughs> they don't want to admit that they're they're sinning. They call it a mistake or mental illness or something. But the problem is always sin. Oh yeah. No matter what the situation is, it starts with sin. Amen. Because it's a spiritual problem every single time, without exception. But the Lord, the Lord's will is to change this for people. So salvation is God's will. Now. First off, we're saved from the penalty of sin plus the acts of sinning. Right. 
Because everybody, believe it or not, on this earth has sinned. Amen. And if they say they haven't, they're lying. They're lying. <laughs> That's another sin. <laughs> but I think what uh, a lot of people get confused with, and, and I remember the teaching on this, and it it uh, helped me. Um, a, a lot of the people think when you say, okay, you're a sinner, they think mm -hmm. they're more thinking of the acts of sin. Right. They're not thinking of what we know now yeah. uh, being enlightened through the word of God of the inward sin that mm. it's something that we can't have. We don't have any control over that inward sin. I mean, we're born with it, that yeah, inherent sin, I guess yeah, you could say, that we got from Adam. Yeah, it's called original sin that was transferred to every human from the loins of Adam. Right, because uh, you always hear that, uh, mm. well, I'm a good person, and they might be. Mm, maybe. But there's none good to say with God, no, not one. Right. Mm -hmm. But that's why we need the blood of Jesus to cleanse within and without. But people don't understand this because they're not in the will of God. Right. Uh, when a person says, I'm a sinner, and they claim to be a Christian, uh, that is a misstatement. Right. Sinner saved by uh, grace. No, no such thing. Right. In the word of God. We don't like that saying. Uh, they were called <laughs> Christians first in Antioch. Saints. So, for me to say as a believer that I'm a sinner is, is a slide in the, the blood of Christ. Right. Amen. So, we don't practice or want to practice sinning verb 24-7. Right. We want to refrain from that with the help of the Holy Spirit, which we can. Yes. Amen. We never have to sin again as a Christian, but unfortunately we will. There's where the covenant comes in. Right. And yep. uh, we can be forgiven, and of course that's part of the deal. But now, on the other hand, like you said, we have the the indwelt sin, which is a noun. Right. Sin nature. So in that regard, yes, we all have that problem. Right. Every human that's born Even Christians. of a woman. Yeah. yeah. It's not extracted at the new birth. No. Right. Not in the Bible. Uh, so there's a war that goes on in the believer. Yeah. The flesh is typified as the sin nature or the, you know, what you're talking mm -hmm. about. And it wars against the spirit. Right. It's at enmity, I think, mm -hmm. is what the Bible says. Yeah. And so that's a good evidence that you're saying. Yeah. Isn't it? If there's a war going on. <laughs> yeah. So we'll not go very deep in this. Uh, it'll take an hour to do it, really. But yeah. just realize that we all have this issue to deal with called the old man. And he's reckoned dead, but then he can be resurrected if we starve out the new man. Mm -hmm. Talking to believers now. so yeah, Right. Salvation is very important. We're saved from the penalty of sin and the acts of sinning the moment you receive Christ as Savior and Lord. Amen. Now, from that point on, it's somewhat conditional that, that you do two things. You know what that might, that might be? Keep, Keep the faith and stay in grace. I get it through one of these years. <laughs> because, see, we can err from the faith and fall from grace. Right. Many think that Adam couldn't fall from grace, but he did. He did. And people do today, sad to say. So we need to be careful about this. Our position next after conversion, our position has changed from a son of Adam to a son of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Everyone on this earth is a son of Adam or a daughter of Adam. Right. But not everyone's a son of God. Mm -hmm. There must be a new birth. We're talking about the will of God. That is a spiritual new birth. That only comes one way. We're not saved, however, from the presence of sin or evil. Right. We, we're around evil and sin all the time. Yeah, we live in an evil world. And it's getting worse. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Not better. Right. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to hold to Christ. That's, That's right. what we're going to do. He'll carry us through. Praise the Lord. So salvation means to be set free from sin and its penalty. What did the text say? Uh, and the Son, if the Son therefore shall make you free, you should, should be, be free, free indeed. indeed. Yes. So he's the one that does it. But the question is, how does he do it? Well, it starts uh, when we believe on him and what he did at Calvary. Amen. Then the Holy Spirit goes to work and we experience the new birth. And then we're to grow in grace and... You've got to find the will of God and do it. That's the challenge. Yes. 
Not for works, not for salvation, but because you are saved, you should desire to do what God wants you to do. Amen. And to become what God wants you to become. That's a challenge. And we want it, don't we? Yeah. We want to seek the plan. Everybody in the amen corner, you want it, don't you? I mean, we're heading that way. That's right. We're not like we used to be. So, in Revelations 1, 5 then, as we're going over there tonight, salvation means to be set free from sin and the penalty thereof. Amen. Here's, Here's how. All right. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. There it is. Amen. That is it in the condensed version. If you're washed in the blood of the Lamb, then you are saved. Praise the Lord. So how does a person experience this washing uh, the sins away, so to speak, by the blood. I they, think first they have to hear the gospel, don't they? They have to hear the gospel. Accept it. Accept it and believe. Act on faith. Mm-hmm. Uh, and receive Christ as Savior. Yep. And Lord. And turn from the devil. Repent. Change. Desire to change. Now, we can't change ourselves. Right. There's got to be a true, another word that you don't hear in the in the Christian church a lot is conversion. An actual conversion. Be converting, converted. Converting. Repent and be converted. You're right. The book of Acts says. Amen. I think that's Acts 4.12. Anyway, uh, there is a change in the inside of a person. Yeah. This is salvation. And then you, you realize that your spirit is now made alive toward God. And you can know the Creator God, the Father God, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit because of the new birth. Amen. Now, that's a good deal. Yep. Now, in 2 Corinthians 5.17, so, as Billy's turning there then, salvation is through and in Christ alone. That's Nothing it. Nothing added to Nothing it. Nothing added to it. If we add to, guess what? Mm. We don't have a true conversion. That's right. I'm very concerned about people that... that say they've been saved some way other than Christ and Him crucified, they're not saved. Right. Can't be. And a lot of them that you talk to around here is like, well, I've been baptized. Or I've born, joined a church. Or there's mm-hmm. another one, uh, my wife's the secretary at the church. And she prays. <laughs> <laughs> We've heard it that. all. None of that. So. But really, there's, there's, the truth is that people are sinners. That's, that's the truth. Yeah. Now, I'm a little bit offended, and, and I don't like to use that word offended, but people do all the time. You're judging. You're, I'm offended. I don't like to hear any preacher that's supposed to know what they're talking about get up and say, we're all sinners. That's not right. Mm-mm. Talk, nope. to, talk with yourself. Talk about yourself. <laughs> A sinner is one that sins all the time, 24-7. and can't help it. Right. Like it. Mm. No, sin's killing you. And uh, Christians, there's no such thing as a sinning Christian. You don't want to sin, not really. No, if you have a true conversion, no, you you, you, you quit that. Yeah, you abhor that. And if you, you hate, sin, you you're going to ask sin. for forgiveness, and yeah. you're going to repent of that, and not live that way because you know it'll kill you. Yep, it'll take you down. So that should be a, a given thing. Uh, so I feel sorry for those preachers that confess that. That's a yeah. negative uh, confession. If yeah. there was one, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Wonder how they're living through the week. Come on, somebody. All right. All right. Amen. Second Corinthians five seventeen. Those are very good scripture to stand on. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Amen. That's a done deal, right there. Simple. It's a done deal. After that, we start our walk with God, which is salvation. Right. So we have the down payment then of salvation. The complete salvation will be when the rapture comes. Yes. That'll be the glorified. Yeah, the ultimate thing. salvation. But we've got the down payment now, which guarantees us the total package. Yes. Yeah. So then now, after a person uh, becomes a believer in Christ and accepts Jesus as Savior and, quote, Lord, <laughs> that means he's the boss. That's right. You don't tell him what you're going to do. You respectfully, Lord, what do you think about this? You you ask, right? Uh-huh. You don't command, you ask. Right. 
Because sometimes we don't know what God's will is concerning certain things. So, if the Lord will, we'll do this and that, James taught. Yes. Anyway, as we're growing in grace, there's, there's some things that we need to do because we are saved. Which is really an evidence of salvation, and that's baptism. Amen. So, the jump start deals with this more uh, extensively, but uh, water baptism is commanded to all believers. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Not optional. Command. Amen. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go you therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. So the word baptism is there. Yep. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's three persons, but yep. in the name, the singular. Name. Right. <laughs> so there we have the Trinity, again, mentioned. Anyway, that's the baptismal formula. Now, what I need to say here is that if a believer truly is born of the Spirit, if they refuse to be baptized, they're sinning. Right. Because, like you said, it's a command yeah. of Christ. And it's an evidence that you're following Christ and you're through with the devil. Amen. It's also a witness to the world. Yeah. That's the reason we go to the town hall down here and to have baptisms whenever people need to get baptized and the drunks leave. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> they an, know what's going on. Yeah, that's right. It's an outward uh, expression of an inward change. Sure. Now, are we going to say that baptism saves? No. No. The no. blood saves. Right. But if the believer is saved, they should, should follow. And should. No, they must get baptized. Amen. The way I see it. Yeah. Not optional. All the way through the book of Acts, they were all water baptized. Well, Jesus was, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I rest my case. Right? Yeah. So, if you're not water baptized, you need to do God's will and ask your preacher... To baptize you. Amen. Right? All right, that's the will of God. The next thing uh, we're going quickly tonight is the Holy Ghost. The Holy mm -hmm. Ghost. Ephesians. For believers only. Yep. Ephes I just wrote down one verse, Ephesians 5.18. Ephesians 5.18. Yeah. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, there's a lot of dis different evidences of a believer being filled with the Spirit. First off, when a believer, when a, when a sinner receives Christ, they're not filled with the Spirit. Right. So a believer is the only person that can be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Not sinners. Yep. Because the blood's been applied. You follow me out there? When the blood's applied, you're, you're a fit candidate, God says, to be filled with His Spirit. Right. And another way to look at that is salvation is the greatest gift that God's given to all of mankind. Mm-hmm. But the baptism in the Holy Ghost is the greatest gift that um, God has given to the church. That's right. The, his body. That's right. For the reason of power and to be a successful witness. But also, when a believer is filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, they will speak with tongues. Yes. Acts 2.4. But then that opens up the door, or the gate, or the... <laughs> Not However really. you want to say, <laughs> to nine spiritual gifts. That's right. That we should pray and, and ask for. Amen. Pray for and ask for. Also, a lot of times, uh, when people are called into the fivefold ministry gift, whatever that gifts might be, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, uh, they're not qualified to preach until they're filled with the Holy Ghost. That's right. Amen. Now, I say that because Jesus told his disciples to wait in Jerusalem until you're filled with the Spirit. He didn't let them preach, right? Right. Therefore, on the basis of Scripture, now I'm on, I'm on thin ice. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter anymore. Uh, <laughs> no one's qualified to preach the gospel until they're filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. I know that makes a lot of folks mad. Why is that? Well, because you're, you're not filled. That's why. Once you get filled, you say, yes, amen. Amen. And Pray a little tongues, too, see? So it's for power, mainly. And we need a powerful church in these last days. It's God's will for every believer 
to be filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. Without question. Uh, a church that rejects the Holy Ghost mm. is going to be a weak, anemic church. Yep. Congregation. That's right. And that's the reason we want the Holy Ghost in our church services. Yes. Now, I know he doesn't move all the time, but when he's not moving, quote unquote, we're to be taught, instructed, and listen to preaching, this and that. But there are times. There are times. That you <laughs> act like a drunk. I mean, yeah. how can I? Well, it says be different not, people do different things. You be know? not drunk with wine, where is excess, but mm -hmm. be filled with the Holy Ghost. So there's, yeah. you know, it's, it's they similar. thought they were drunk in their acts. Yeah, staggering around. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and well, I don't believe in the power of God uh, slaying people. Well, uh, what are you going to do when God starts standing them back up? Hmm? <laughs> I know this. I know there's one church, they stand behind them so they won't fall. What's going to happen when they both go down? Well, hmm? That's happened before. Oh, yeah. Here. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, if it's in the Spirit, it's in order. Yeah. That's what Zion Word believes, and that's what the Bible teaches, right? Amen. Amen. Uh, there's the flesh principle, but, you know, I'm not worried about the flesh getting in too much. Uh, you know, there's enough old wet gunny sacks to beat it down. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. I tell you what, when the Holy Ghost starts moving in church, man, people start acting like, we're saved and we really are going to heaven. Yeah, and you love, love everybody. Love everybody, yeah. <laughs> like a drunk. Yep. But it's spiritual. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And Jesus is the one they give him. Yep. It's like uh, the reality of yeah. heaven and oh. God. Oh, yeah. Just become Love real. all mixed together. Not saying nothing. There's a lot of benefits of being filled with the Spirit. First off, if you're empty, you need to be full. Right? Yeah, amen. But also, it's been my experience that uh, you can understand the Scripture better. Oh yeah, definitely. You can pick up on revelation knowledge for other people. What do you say? And you get it. You understood. It's almost like uh, the scale. Your eyes are open. Mm -hmm. And your ears. And your ears. Yeah. yeah. We're more in tune with uh, the spirit realm. Amen. Also, you can discern demons and this and that. It, uh, I've never seen anyone try to cast a demon out without being filled with the Holy Ghost. Right. Have you? Has anybody in the Amen corner ever seen that? I've no. never seen it, but they tried to there in the Bible. Seven sons of Sceva? <laughs> yeah. Jesus, I'm no <laughs> ball, I know. <laughs> Who are you? Back in the old tent ministry days, the guys that were casting out demons here in America, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You don't try to do it if you're not filled with the Spirit. Yeah. Especially if you're overseas on missions. <laughs> you you want to be filled with the Spirit. <laughs> Remember that time we were down in South Africa, and they've uh, been over there 16, 18 times, I guess, different countries. But uh, in South Africa, and there was this denomination of brother came in. Yes. And he wanted to, to speak to the pastors. We were having a conference. And so we yielded some time and let him come in and, and greet everybody. And then he had the Africans uh, pray. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, denominational brethren, uh, very quiet, you know, amen, that's about it, right? Right. But when the Africans pray, it's Holy Ghost style. One starts and they all fall in. And, and it goes gets loud for 20 minutes. And loud. And loud. And loud. <laughs> In different languages and even yeah, tongues. Yeah, yeah, huh? And this guy, I know, was spooked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> him and the people that were with him. <laughs> it's humorous, really. So, but anyway, I tell you what, you go overseas, I know we're off here, but it's okay. It, it's part of God's will to uh, share the good news and, yes. and uh, fulfill the divine commission. So, it's still God's will we're talking about is... Usually, when you go overseas to Africa or Haiti or wherever you might go, no matter what the name of the, on the church door is, even some Baptists, they're still Holy Ghost believers. Yeah, Amen. Just well, a common in this country, yeah. it was like that in the beginning. I well, mean, John back in Wesley, the 1800s, a Methodist was a powerful preacher. John but Wesley. they became more of a corporation and a business, and power left. Yeah, they mm. would. They're taking orders yeah. from up here. So. Well, that's the reason we're not part of that stuff, because it goes nowhere. Right. Uh, you're blamed for causing trouble. 
but uh, so was Jesus. Yeah. So was the disciples and the apostles. Mm -hmm. So I guess we're a pretty good company. Yeah. 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 Yes. Amen. I'm going to take the Holy Ghost away. It's God's will. Yeah. We're talking about God's will. You reject this message and you're not accepting God's will. Right. The next thing we're going to talk about is, is study the Word of God in prayer. Uh, 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So my thought on this this afternoon, Billy, was if believers do not have some type of study habit, I don't care if it's 10 minutes a day, 30 minutes, you just can't survive on just Sunday morning only. And never open up that Bible. You've got to open up that Bible every now and then. Hopefully all the time. And uh, prayerfully read it. And study it. Yeah. Now, reading's one thing, but studying's another. Yeah. And notice that word workman. Pretty much means it's work to do it. You it's, have it's to make God's an work. effort. That's the reason a preacher does the work of God. Yeah. You've got to get in the Word and, and then feed the sheep. Basically. So if a person studies then... They'll not be ashamed. Right. But if a person doesn't study, what will they have to give out? It, I'm not saying everyone's called to formal studies, but then we're still to study. And uh, to be a good example, if nothing else, and also to, to, to share with people what the Word of God really teaches, and how can you know if you don't study? You so can. those study aids that we have... There's yes. all kinds of study aids that we have. All kinds of that them. we could send out <laughs> uh, if you don't have an opportunity to, you know, study formally or whatever. There's a bunch, and I'll make this pitch. But there's a hundred, at least a hundred and fifty videos on our YouTube channel, mm, okay. teaching, lots of teaching and preaching that you have access to it. That's what we're trying to say. Access, sure. Uh, finished work of Christ. Uh, Dave's New Testament commentary. Uh, it took me three years to do that. Mm -hmm. Every verse in New Testament. Uh, so, it's available. It's the strangest thing, though. Uh, people really don't appreciate uh, the efforts of others until they're gone. Mm. And that's just human nature. Uh, so, a lot of times, what you're looking for it's right in front of you. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. Praise God. Amen. So we need to study, all right? Second uh, Timothy 3.15 now. It's almost the same. Almost. Second Timothy 3.15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Wise unto salvation. Yep. So he said from a child. Yep. All right. You want me to read 16? Sure, that, go ahead. I think that goes along sure. with it. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Mm -hmm. That's right. There's the answer. Mm -hmm. There's the answer. And then the next one, I'll do it real quick. That the man of God may be perfect, mm -hmm. thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. There's no end to it. It just keeps going. Yeah. So it would be a very good idea for parents that have children to teach the scriptures to your children. Right? Amen. Make them wise. Uh, someone said, well, why study? Why study? Well, let's put it this way. Studying uh, is like sharpening an axe. You ever try to, sharp, to chop down a tree that's not... The axe is dull. <laughs> right. Chainsaws dull. Uh, study is like honing uh, the ability the Holy Spirit can give you, and He uses the Word through you to do it. Yes, Amen. That's what witnessing is, preaching, teaching. It's all the same, just different degrees and different levels of depths and heights and widths and breadths. <laughs> <laughs> and jots and tittles. Yeah, right. <laughs> It's like my wife said, well, I understand reading the scripture, but where do you get the stuff in between the scriptures? That's what she wants to know. Uh, that comes from God. <laughs> yeah, that's allowing him to yeah. take you through the whole Bible to yeah, it all fits dissect it. That's like another this. word. Is uh, Rightly mm -hmm. dividing is just dissecting that word. Rightly dividing mm -hmm. the word of truth. Yep. And so if we don't know how to do that, then how do we know how to study? So you need to be taught these things, and it's God's will for you 
to be taught these things. Amen. It's so detrimental uh, to the church for someone to get out there that hasn't studied and then start trying to teach a uh, formal little group or something and then a bunch of false doctrine comes in. It's not right. They divided the word and then people shipwreck. Yeah. Happens all the time. And not knowing the word and not knowing how to counteract that false doctrine mm -hmm. and actually realize that it is false doctrine. How would they know yeah. unless somebody teaches them? Right. Amen. So there's a big responsibility on the church to uh, to teach the flock correctly. Study. We must study. Yes. Uh, and then, of course, prayer uh, is essential. What I teach, as you go to Matthew 21, 22, uh, what I teach is, uh, from what I think about it, is um, when you read the Bible, prayerfully read the Bible. Yeah. Okay? Amen. Prayerfully. Lord, show me. What do you mean here? And the Holy Spirit is the teacher, uh, not people. Amen. But he uses people. Yep. redeemed ones that know something have studied that know how to pray and, and hear the voice of God to teach others right. how to do the same thing Amen. I think maybe it might be called discipleship you think? yeah, yeah. Just like be a, make disciples is what the Lord we're talking about God's will all Amen. this stuff we're talking about yeah. God's will and you and uh, Elder Monty was it 80 plus years of studying the word yeah, yeah. Amen. And uh, these guys know everything. Uh, I'd back up a little bit. Uh, like Brother Thompson used to say, Dr. Thompson, he's gone to be with the Lord now. He's asked me one time when I was young, he said, uh, well, have you learned enough now to know you don't know anything? <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh -huh. I have. Yeah, that's right. But uh, the Lord has been gracious to us. So, Amen. And prayer. We need to learn how to pray. Okay, look at this one. Matthew twenty one twenty two. Mm. And all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing you shall receive. Uh, there was another one, another scripture I didn't write down. Uh, let's say I'll just I'll just uh, give it to you, uh, paraphrased here. Uh, the disciples come to Jesus one time in the book of Matthew and they said, uh, Lord, teach us to pray. You might want to check that in your concordance while I'm rambling a little mm -hmm. bit here. Teach us to pray was their request to Jesus. And the reason they asked the Lord to teach them how to pray is because they recognized the secret to the Lord's anointing hinged on a lot of things, but one thing was prayer. Yeah. And he'd go up and pray all night, right? Right. Oh, yeah. He always prayed. And that's found in Luke 11, 1. Yeah. I, I, I go ahead and, and read that one. Uh, I think that's one. Yeah, I got it here. Too. I just didn't write it on my note. Go ahead and read it. Okay. Um, Luke 11, 1. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, mm -hmm. when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. That's right. Mm -hmm. that's, so that's what I'm saying. They, they wanted to know how to pray. Uh, and, and prayer is just not asking and, and letting God know all your troubles. He already knows. That's right. <laughs> so what is prayer? It's talking to God. Just like we're talking. Yeah. back and, It's I mean, supposed to be a back and forth. Uh, two way. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> what do people do? Oh, Lord, bless us for in the morning and leave. Uh -huh. And don't give the Lord time right. to speak to you. Right. That's not prayer. Prayer, uh, Paul said, pray all, pray always. Mm -hmm. Pray without ceasing. Always be mindful, prayerfully mindful. It's more of a, a state of being, don't you think? Yeah. Uh, not necessarily crying and squalling and bawling and rolling on the floor and agony and prayer. What? That's flesh. Yeah. That's flesh. Yeah, you can't do that all the time. I mean, I think... I think there are times, though. Yeah, there are times. You that, get a burden, uh, yeah. Right. But I think, you know, more of what God wants, you know, just walking through the day. I mean, everybody has jobs or should oh, have yeah. jobs. He understands that. But, mm -hmm. I mean, walk around and just talking to God all the time. Yeah, how do I fix that machine? How, mm -hmm. you know, all the time it's, it's something, right? Right. Oh, yeah. But we need to learn how to ask and ask the Lord. And believe we receive what we've asked for before it shows up. Now, that's the kicker. Yeah. It's always that way. Uh-huh. Isn't it? Oh, yeah. Fact is, 
there's prayers we forgot about, but God hadn't. No, right. <laughs> and then the answer shows up, oh, yeah. See? Uh-huh. He's faithful. But now, if we don't ask, then I don't think we're going to receive very much. Yeah. What's that scripture? Ask and you shall receive. Yeah. But if you, you ask uh, to heap it upon your own lust. Uh, no, it's, that's the wrong kind of pr- pr- right. prayer. That's God the wrong kind of those. prayer. Yeah. Right. So the motives are checked and the heart is checked. And, and also on this prayer subject, if you have bitterness and envy and hatred mm, for somebody, you better right. ask for forgiveness and go to them and say, well, I'm sorry. And right. Amen. Just clear the air. Whether you made a mistake or not, that's not the point. If your heart is condemning you in any way, then... God really can't answer like he wants to. There's a scripture in Psalms that says, uh, if I re- regard iniquity in my heart, guess what? The Lord will not, not hear me. me. Right. Oh. Mm-hmm. So you got to check it out. And uh, that's the reason every time I go to prayer, and I'm serious, I always go to the cross. Yeah. <laughs> which yep. was our sacrifice. Mm-hmm. That lets us into the throne room. Yep. It's a process, but not really. It's it's done, but yet we got to understand how this thing works. Yeah. Right. Amen. We need to be taught the will of God. Prayer is very important. It's like breathing. If we don't pray, guess what? Mm-hmm. We're not breathing. Yeah, and we die. To win the land. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are times for prayer. Uh, there are times to go in the closet. Most of my prayer is alone. I don't, we don't do a bunch of praying in the church. Of course, we pray in the church, but I mean, the old way is you know, this request, that, this, that, this, that, and you could take an hour praying for all these needs. God already knows about these needs. Right. Amen. Besides that, if any man's afflicted, let him pray. I can't Amen. pray you out of your trouble. Yeah. No, you. Yeah. It's up you to you. Have to get on your face and say, Lord, help. Yeah. <laughs> That's help. really what prayer is. <laughs> help. Help. <laughs> Right? Yeah. Then believe that he will help. Amen. Of course, he wants to help, but he wants us as his children to ask him. Just like the grandkids. Yeah. They get up on <laughs> Papa's knee. I already know what they want. And uh, what you want, Zayla? Hmm? I already know. Yeah. Usually sugar. I want, I want money for my birthday. Okay. Papa, I'll give it to you. <laughs> they get whatever they want, right? Uh well, God's about the same as long as it's not out of his will. Right. He will. He already says yes. Yeah. That was uh, one thing that was coming up in my mind. Hmm? It's got to be according to his will. And the answer is yes. Uh-huh. Every single time. That's right. Yes Unless it'll do harm to you and then he won't, he right. won't follow through. Amen. Like if you're praying for $100,000, if it'll cause you to backslide, you won't get it. <laughs> right. With anything. Yeah. That's the way it is. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the Lord tests believers and um, they slip and slide a little too much because of this materialism that gets a hold of them. And uh, Which brings us to another important subject as we're <laughs> moving from prayer now to something everybody wants to hear about. And that is T-I-T-H-E. That's the word for me. <laughs> right? Tithe. <laughs> if you can't spell. <laughs> when I first started preaching, I thought it was tie. Bring your tithes into the store here. <laughs> tithes? What do you mean tithes? <laughs> no, tithe. Amen. Tithe. First Corinthians 16, 1 and 2. And while Billy's turning there tonight, there are those that would say, well, tithing was under the law, and therefore it's not required today. Is that, Is that right? right? Is that right? No, it's not right. <laughs> it's, it's not, not right. right. Nope. Because Abraham tithed. To Melchizedek before the law was given by Moses. That's right. I think it was um, uh, Isaac that tithed. Mm-hmm. I mean, all the great uh, patriarchs tithe. In the New Testament, uh, well, because everyone goes to Malachi. We're not going to Malachi tonight, Malachi 3. Bring right. all the tithe in the storehouse. The storehouse is your local church. The storehouse is your local church. Amen. Not some hotshot TV preacher out here that don't even know who you are. Right. How can they minister to you? See, God wants the local church, and we'll get to that in just a minute. But tithing, then, is very important. 
Uh, God doesn't need the money, but the church functions this way. This was God's will. Amen. Amen. And by the way, the Levites received the tithe. Yes. In the Old Testament. Amen. All right. Look at this one now. 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do you. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings there be no gatherings when I come. Mm-hmm. Amen. There it is. In the New Testament. Uh, the first day of the week is Sunday. Amen. Didn't it? Yeah. So that means that people are going somewhere and gathering together and bringing their tithe into the storehouse, which is the local church. So the church will be able to operate and function in the will of God. That's what it's all about. And mainly it's about souls. It's about ministering to people, saved and unsaved, it's about spiritual nourishment. Uh, we get into all the operations of the Holy Spirit, uh, divine insights of the Scripture. And it, it's just great to get around other Christians with like precious faith, don't yeah, you think? That's right. Yes, amen. And understand the perils of the world, and we're coming together, and, and we're, we're going to worship God, and we're, we're, we're going to uh, hear from the Word, and we're going to feel the Spirit, and it doesn't get any better right. on this earth. Amen than a good church service. Now, these church services are not all the same. Oh, no. Uh, if they were, then man would be running the thing. He'd be dead. Twice a day. Dead, plucked up by the roots. <laughs> I used to go to a church, and you could, you could okay, it's, it's 10 to 12. We know exactly what's going to happen now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One, two, three. We start at 9.45. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We got, we got these churches. Oh, we got two services on Sunday morning. Okay, well, what if the Holy Spirit moves and you go over the time here? Uh-oh. That's not good. Well, no, we're going to lose a lot of people. <laughs> this one Episcopalian minister that I listened to one time, and you wouldn't think that he'd be filled with the Spirit, but he was. And uh, he had a, a pretty large church congregation, but... There was some of the old timers that were traditional, okay? Right. Oh, the Fort Fry am coming. Then you got the other guys. Oh, yeah. They would. Contemporary. <laughs> yeah, right? whatever. Contemporary, I don't know. yeah. I think it's contemporary. A little upbeat oh, yeah. stuff. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so, but the, the conti- contemporary church uh, believed in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. They'd praise God and worship, you know. And Probably shout. really loud music. And, oh, yeah, yeah, loud. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely loud. But the traditional people, very quiet, mm-hmm. very calm. Nobody said nothing. You follow me? Oh, yeah. A lot of churches like that. But one Sunday he forgot which was which. Which service. The preacher. <laughs> right. <laughs> and he told him about preaching on the Holy Spirit to the conservative bunch. And guess what? Several of them came up to want the Holy Ghost. Amen. We never know what God's going to do. That's right. I know one thing. I don't want to go to a funeral, so that's out for me. Mm-mm. No, I've got to go. That's one reason I went to Pentecostal way and the spiritual way is because I need to be in a place where I could let God have his way. Right. Something with a little life. With a hopes of a little life. Yeah. <laughs> so. Some churches, God help them. Somebody says amen. They fall out of the pew. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh. If somebody raises their hands, yes, you have a question. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. But this is the stuff that you know we've been through, and I know people are out there. They don't know what to do. I was talking to one guy. He goes to church with 3,000 people. He said, yeah, 3,000 people come through here. I'll do them now. They come through. Okay. What's that mean? Come through? Herding them in like cattle, yep. I guess. Get a donut and leave. <laughs> Cup of coffee. There's no substitute for the Word of God, people. (laughs) Oh, boy. You usually got to find a congregation with a preacher that doesn't care too much about what people think. And it's on on the wrong side of the railroad track. Right? Right. That's usually the ones that 
Mm-hmm. Those troublemakers. You know, that's usually the ones that where you will find what you're looking for. Every time. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Tithing. So we need to practice tithing. We taught uh, some lessons when I got back from Africa last time and I sent it over there and we taught it here. Uh, the law of sowing and reaping mm -hmm. and the law of uh, spirit of life has victory over the law of sin and death. Right. That's the only way. But on this, this tithing thing and, and offerings, uh, it, it will eliminate selfishness and greed out of the believer's life. Amen. That's right. Can we trust God? Did God lie? No. Nope. Here, here's the deal. You can have 100% of your paycheck with a curse. What's the curse? Well, it's, it's the way the world is. Or you can have 90% with the blessing. Amen. <laughs> Which one do you want? And when you get above the tithe, now you're starting to get into the 30, 60, what was I preaching on? 100 fold. But walk. It, just yep. means, it just means the best that God has. In any situation, that's the 100 fold. That's right. That's what it is. Amen. Revelation to me, that was, we gave that here a while back, did we not? Yes. And several in the church, you know, I'm experiencing the 100 fold walk. I'll tell you what, man. Things is coming together, prospering, and everything. Yeah. It's Amen. the 100 fold walk. Don't give up. Don't give up. Just keep on sowing and believe in God. That's right. And God will bless you. You will reap if you faint not. Yeah. The blessings are attached to obedience in faith. You know that? Tithing. So if some believers, well, there's some believers been, that's come through here and they've told me, I don't know if I can tithe. And I say, I don't know if you can afford not to. Yeah. So that's a choice that a believer has to make. But with my own experience, and we're not under a law here, but it's it's what's the will of God is. So yeah, the will of God is what we're talking uh, about. When you get down to pray, and if, and if you owe back tithe, uh-oh. Mm. Mm -hmm. There's a little something. Uh, son, what about that tithe you owe me? I know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Because we all wrestle with this over the years, right? Right. But finally, you, you give up and let God have his way and trust God. That's right. Amen. You tie it, your tires are last longer on the car. Yep. Hmm? Clo Clo the clothes heart, last yeah. longer. Yeah. Shoes. Don't have to go to the doctor near as much. Right. No. Little things. It's not just money, but other things God blesses us. Yes. You know. Amen. Uh, good family, this and that. A great church with a super great preacher. I mean, hey. Amen. <laughs> on and on and on we can go. So we need to tithe. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you think that uh, withholding the tithe is stealing? Yeah. Well, I here's here's another question. Uh, will thieves get into heaven? Nope. <laughs> What's the amen corner think? You think no. people that steal will get into heaven? Nope. So it's it's more critical than we think because the Lord takes this personal. I don't know if a person loses their soul if they don't tithe, but what about somebody that we could reach because of the tithe and they lose their soul? That's right. That's what it's now, about. How God's going to look at that? Mm -hmm. It's more serious than we think. Yes, amen. We're talking about the will of God here. And if this offends you, you're not right with God. Amen. You're out of the will of God. Amen. I don't know how many Christians have asked me. I don't. They say, well, I don't know God's will. Well, we're, we're sharing some of it here. And you should get a hold of this and, and Satan will back off of your life. That's right. If you don't get a hold of the will of God, guess what? Satan moves in. Yep. And I saw something on our last trip that I'd never seen before. They did back through the mud where we went back in the mud. Oh, yeah. Across the swamp. Mm -hmm. They took up their tithe, mm -hmm. and I looked down there, and a person had put an egg in. Yeah. There was three ears of corn. I remember that. Mm -hmm. Just happy as can be. And loved to give it. That's what they had. That was their increase, and yeah. that's what they gave to the Lord. Well, they didn't have any money, so they yep. gave that. Yep. Amen. And that That's still tithing. Yeah, that's right. Now, let me say something here. <laughs> All you chicken growers out there, 
in McDonald County. <laughs> you got 30,000 chickens and you just sell them. I don't need 3,000 chickens, okay? Right. Besides that, the elders won't skin them. <laughs> right. What about tomatoes? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> if it's small tomatoes, no, 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 I don't. People can do what they want, but yep. have fun. Hey, Yeah. have fun. Amen. The last thing we want to talk about maybe is, is something that's people don't want to hear is church attendance. Uh-oh. Now, why is that a negative? Why is that a negative? Why is that a negative? Well, because they've got other things to do. Out of the will of God. <laughs> Out. Yep. You hear me? Too Out. busy. Too busy. How many of you are listening to me right now? And you don't attend church on a regular basis, and I mean regular. Well, the virus, it doesn't matter. Amen. I'm going to stay on the preach. <laughs> yeah. Church attendance is not optional. Amen. Show me one scripture where God says it's okay not to attend church with other believers. One scripture. Anybody. Anyone? Anyone can email us and you show me two or three scriptures in the mouth of two or three witnesses let every word be established. You show me where it's okay not to go to church. It's not there. You'll have to get some off-the-wall version that's not even inspired to forget it. Right. We use the King James. That's it, period. Like one little, little old lady said, Brother Pastor, I thank God. <laughs> Jesus used the King James, and I used the same one. Well, he didn't. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> then she said, yes, pastor, Jesus spoke with tongues, and bless the Lord, I do too. Well, he didn't. Well, he didn't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God bless little granny, you know, but I mean, we get all kinds. Oh, yeah. God loves them, you know, but they just haven't been taught anything. <laughs> <laughs> so... God understands. Church attendance is, is is critical. Yes. Because if Satan can get you out of your church where God puts you, then you're going to backslide. Right. You can't go to another church and get out of the will of God because God didn't send you there. Right. Amen. You're not free to go wherever you want to go. He, he plants you. Amen. I think it was Psalms 1, the revelation came to me. We're planted. Let's look at Psalms 1. We're about through here, so I think that's Psalms 1 that the revelation came to me. Uh, that was just an eye opener uh, a couple of years ago. One. Yeah. Read a few verses that. We've got time tonight. Uh, starting in verse 1, I Might guess. As well. It goes 1 through 6. Yeah. Blessed is the man that walk, walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor mm. standeth in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. That's the word. Okay. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Amen. Let's stop right there. How many want to prosper? Amen. All right. Now, a key right here, you're planted. Read that verse where it says you're planted. You are planted by the rivers of water. That brings mm. forth fruit. Yeah. His fruit in his season. His fruit right. in his season. Not ours, his. Amen. So you're planted into a local church. That's what I'm saying. Right. And there's where you begin to understand these things that we're, we're teaching tonight. Uh, you can't survive on your own. No. Uh, even pastors need the church. Every believer needs a church. Amen. Because it's a glorious church, and Jesus loves the church. Right. How can we love God when we forsake the church? Mm. Nah. You've destroyed your witness with me. If I ask you where you go to church, well, so I was talking with a guy this week. Now, he, he really is looking for a church. It's difficult to find where you belong. It'll take yeah. some seeking, some prayer. Right. Amen. Some, and, but God will send somebody along, and God will speak to you. Yes. And uh, you just follow. And don't let Satan push you. Now, so many times, even here in this congregation, well, something comes up and I couldn't make it to church. Uh, Satan will see to that. <laughs> right? Yes. Yep. But once you commit, 
All right, family, we're going to church, and that is it. Satan will leave you alone. Yeah. Morning. Yeah. That'll wait. Amen. Because God's first. See, this is this is evidence. We're talking about the will of God and evidence in a believer's life. Amen. So the scripture we want to read then in closing is Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. Mm -hmm. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Yeah, now we're going to talk about this a little bit. The day approaching... We got a pandemic, supposedly, and yet I don't see people getting in church. Mm -mm. Why is that? Well, the day's approaching. Yeah, They'll say is. that. They admit that. Yeah. Talk to a guy today. He's scared. Mm. Afraid. But he's not in church. So where's the protection? I mean, let's put it this way. Christ is the head of the church. Yes. But... The pastor is the under-shepherd of the church. And if you don't have a pastor, now you hear me real good. If you don't have a pastor, you're out of the will of God. Amen. Period. Amen. Does that offend you? Well, I'm a pastor. Well, where, has God set you? Has God? No. Where's the evidence? So I don't have time for it anymore. Amen. People are, are going to hell, and you're, you're running around here like some hotshot preacher. No, I'm staying out of the preacher. I'm staying out of the preacher. No. My wife says, why do you do that? Well, it's the call of God on me. That's why. And we've got to shake this thing. Amen. Shake it. Everything that can be shaken will, will be. be shaken. Amen. <laughs> Besides that, what I'm saying it shouldn't bother anybody. It's in the will of God. Yep. Shouldn't be offended by it. So the day's approaching. We know that. So now verse 24 again. Let us, us believers, consider one another. Now, if I don't show up for church and... Sister Sal is going to say, I wonder where Brother Randy is. Yeah. Are we are we considered that that saint when we're absent in our chair? No, we're not. We're not considered. We're not considering one another. Right. To, you know, encourage them in the love of God and do good works. All these things were taught in the church. Amen. The only thing you're going to hear out of the church setting, the true New Testament church setting, are things you really don't need. Because God sets people into a local church with a set, specific order of sermons and teachings and preachings and movements of the Holy Spirit that you need, specifically designed for the local church, Amen. the congregation. That's the reason you can't go somewhere else and hear from God because you don't fit there. You don't fit there. Right. Amen. So you need to find out where you belong and just make that commitment. I tell you what, as many people watch this, you're in driving distance, you ought to be knocking the door down about 10.30 Sunday morning around here. Amen. Well, you know, something come up. Some terrible catastrophe. Oh, it's always something, but there's no excuse. Right. Out of the will of God. Amen. So this is what this little book deals with. Is the will of God for your life. Do not forsake the assembly of ourselves together. And I'm going to say something here. If you don't have a pastor, it's not a church. Amen. I've never seen cell groups work. They always split off, cause trouble, division. Yes. Not from God. Right. Nope. There has to be oversight of the saints. Amen. Because the flesh can get in and Satan can send in tares, which he does. But... The preaching the Word of God moves them out. Sad to say. Moves them out. You know, there's, a certain, there's somewhat protection in the church. Yes. When Amen. Judgment Day comes, uh, the Lord's going to have somewhat to say to you people that don't belong to a church. Now, I'm not saying you're going to come down and shake the preacher's hand and squall and ball and, and they vote you in. No. If you're born again, you're in the church. But where you go... It's very important because the wrong church can kill you. I'm saying that every week, but it's true. Amen. And I want to give you one scripture that 
came came to my mind just now came back again but jeremiah 315 even in the old testament mm-hmm. um god was had foreknowledge of the church that his son was going to start mm-hmm. um jesus jeremiah 315 and i will give you pastors yeah according to my heart which shall feed you yeah, with knowledge right. and understanding that's right amen because the Lord gives certain insights to that individual because of that, that office. Amen. And he gave them to you. <laughs> For good. Each individual that's listening to yeah. us today. So, so to say we don't need this is, is, is out of the will of God. Yeah. It's right here. Yeah. Even in the Old Testament. To say we don't need uh, the church is, I guess God doesn't know what he's doing when Jesus started the thing. Right? <laughs> No, and you, you take a look at the people's spiritual condition that do not go to church. Now think about this. All right, let me, let me go back here. They haven't been baptized, reject the Holy Ghost, they don't study, they don't pray, uh, they don't tithe, they don't go to church. Is that person a Christian? No. Well, they're going to say we're judging. Well, we're inspecting fruit and there isn't any. Yeah, because that is, I mean, that's the basic the will, will of God. Basic will of God right there. Good good point. You brought that up. I'm glad you did because in the Jumpstart book, uh, it's just elementary teaching, but the church doesn't understand yet. Uh, the general will of God is for every believer. Amen. Period. Amen. It's the same. And after you show the Lord, you're, you're serious about this and this is your lifestyle, see, Yep. Now, in a process of time, when God can trust you, then He will move you into the specific will of God, which is above the general will of God. Amen. Amen. It's it's honed in some yep. way by the Holy Ghost. Right. Many years ago, I was asking God, what do you want me to do? And He told me after prayer, a lot of prayer, He said, when you become who I say you are, you will do what I want you to do automatically. Amen. It's not about what you want me to do. It's what God wants you to be. Amen. He wants you to become. Right. And you will. If you have a desire. Do you desire to do the will of God? I'm going to make a statement now. And then we're going to do something else as we close. Uh, People that are not practicing the will of God which is the scripture, basically, will not make the rapture. Amen. Because you're sinning. Yep. So, is that person born again? What do you think, amen, corner? You don't know? Well, the train's answering here in tongues. I can hear what he's saying. <laughs> uh, God will have to make that decision. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to get out of that one. <laughs> God the train saying no. no. <laughs> uh, let's put it this way: If you are saved, why not do the will of God? You should have a desire to. Yeah. If there's if there was a change, then it's an automatic desire. Man, I gotta I gotta know more. I want to know God. I want to get closer to God. This is the way. Amen. Then you find purpose for your life and specifics. In the church ministry. Yes. Specifics. So we need to find the specifics. And it takes years to find that. So prepare. How do I prepare? General will of God. Amen. That's the way you prepare. That's where you start. And to slip on any of this, then the Lord holds back, because he has to, the specifics. That's right. And what if we don't fulfill the specifics? How many people suffer? Right. Suffered humanity needs to hear the truth. With signs and wonders following the word, there's the power of God. Amen. And it's up to us as believers, New Testament church, to carry out God's will in the earth. That's what it's all about. That's our purpose. To find God's will and simply do it. Amen. But some say, well, I can't do it. Yeah, you can. Holy Spirit is given to you to help you. That's right. Amen. So, it's all about surrendering to the will of God. So, I'm encouraging you to get in the will of God and don't let Satan back you up from it. Don't let nobody stand in your way. All right? 
If the church you go to doesn't believe the will of God, you need to get out of it. You're in the wrong church. You're in the wrong church. Period. If they tell you there's several ways to God, you need to get out of that church. Oh, yes. There's only Amen. one way. Amen. So, that's about it for me tonight. I tried to stay out of the preach best I could. I think I did. I don't know. Just a couple times. Did I stay out of the preach? Yeah. yeah. A little bit? Okay. Well, I wouldn't want to make anybody offended. You know, <laughs> no, it's my job to, to afflict the comfortable. Yeah. Right. And comfort the afflicted. That's my job. Amen. The church is too lax. We need to get on fire for God. So start doing the will of God and you will get on fire for God. Amen. We're in revival around here. About time for another move, right? That's right. Move of the Holy Spirit, yeah. Amen. So the Lord bless you until next time. And the two things we request you to do is keep the faith and stay in grace. And you will make heaven your home. Amen. All right, God bless your hearts. We'll see you Sunday night with the five crowns for believers. All right. Amen.